everybody! Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Today I have something really exciting to share with you. I'm actually starting a little mini series that is going to teach you how far you can make one whole chicken stretch. This mini series will be three separate videos, but they'll all be released within a couple days of each other all this week. On our homestead, we actually raise all of our own meat. So when we're planning how much meat we're going to use for the year, um, it's really important for me to be thinking about how I can stretch all the meat, all the animals that we raise for meat, how I can stretch that to get the most for each meal. On our homestead, we raise 50 chickens each year for our family to eat. Now that gives me about one chicken per week for our family. And we've been doing that for several years and it works out really well. But if I can use that one chicken and stretch it out to two meals or even three meals in a week, it makes me feel like we are good stewards of the animals that we raise for meat for our family. Now, being able to take one whole chicken and use it for two or three meals for your family, that's not just good for homesteaders who are raising their own meat, it's also good for people who still are shopping at the grocery store for meat. Whole chickens are very inexpensive in comparison to buying a chicken cut up or just buying boneless skinless chicken breasts or whatever. Uh, so if I can also teach you all what to do with one whole chicken and spread that out into multiple meals, that is going to save you a lot of money. The main reason why we decided to start raising our own meat, and that was actually the first goal that we had of becoming self-sufficient, is because meat is the most expensive thing that we were buying at the grocery store. So that was one way for us to save money, was to start raising our own meat. So to save even more money by utilizing one chicken for multiple meals, it's a no-brainer. So today is the first video of a three-part video series, mini-series, of how to use one whole chicken to feed your family three separate meals. In this three-part series, we're going to be cooking the chicken first and then taking it all off the bone and using the meat that way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cook the chicken. Today I'm choosing to roast this chicken in the oven. It'll take about an hour and a half to two hours to cook, uh, depending on how big the chicken is. And I'm doing it that way because I'm actually going to be using part of this chicken to make our first meal for lunch. So I need the chicken to be cooked quickly. Other options for cooking it for this mini series for you, you could put it in the crock pot and cook it all day. Or if you really are strapped for time and if your chicken isn't very big, you could cook it in the instant pot. So this is just going to be a very basic cooking method for me. I'm going to roast it in the oven just with a little bit of oil on the skin and some salt. So I'm going to bake this chicken in the oven on 375 for anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. This is a six pound chicken. That's another reason that we enjoy raising our own meat. Uh, we feel like we can get more meat for our money and a six pound chicken, I'm not sure if you can even get that at the grocery store anymore. Who knows, I haven't bought meat in the store in so long. Uh, but this is a good sized chicken for our family. We'll produce a lot of meat for these three meals. The first recipe that I'll be making for lunch today is an easy chicken alfredo. I'm going to serve that with organic penne pasta and a homegrown salad from in our greenhouse. So while the chicken is in the oven, I might as well go out to the greenhouse and pick the lettuce. Well, it's nice in here. Let's check out the temperature. 70 degrees, 70.2. That's nice. It has been so wonderful to have all of this fresh lettuce in here throughout the winter.
while I'm out here, I'm also going to harvest some of this chickweed. Chickweed actually is a wild edible that grows here. Kevin has transplanted some in here because he loves it so much. And even though it's going kind of crazy, I'm glad to have it. Well, the chicken is done now. It took about an hour and 45 minutes at 375 degrees. Now I just need for this to cool down. We're gonna be pulling all of the meat off of this chicken, so uh, I need for it to at least cool down until I can uh, handle it with my bare hands. Okay, so I think that this chicken is cool enough to start taking it off the bone. I'm going to be putting the meat into these measuring cups just so that in the end I know how much meat I have to work with. Over here I have my Instant Pot uh, bowl and I'm going to be putting the uh, juice and the bones and the back and everything, the neck, in here. And then later on I'm going to use that to make some broth for a different meal. So this skin is too wonderful to waste. So I'm going to put that aside and I have three anxious people waiting to eat it when I'm done. So I picked all of the meat off of this chicken. It ended up being about six cups of meat, which is what I actually expected. That's what I was hoping for for these next three recipes. So now I'm just going to put all of the bones into my instant pot bowl. Any of the soggy, yucky skin. I'm saving that to, I'm saving all of this to uh, make some chicken broth. Now I saved the skin and added in there uh, the skin that didn't get eaten because I think it adds flavor. It does add a little bit of fat, but overall these are pretty lean chickens. And I'm going to add the juice and the water and the broth that has already been made into the bowl as well. And I'll be doing something with this later on. So I've divided the chicken up. We are definitely going to use two cups in our lunch today to make the Alfredo. I actually put in here just a little bit less than two cups. And then I divided these up as well. I'm going to put them in the refrigerator and we'll use those on our next two recipes. The chicken alfredo recipe that I'm going to be teaching you today actually comes together pretty quickly and I promise you it is a simple recipe. Because it comes together so quickly I'm actually going to put the water on the stove top to get it boiling so we can be cooking our pasta while I'm making the sauce. Okay, it's time to start making the sauce, and I promise you it is very easy. We're gonna start off by melting one uh, stick of butter in a pan, in a nice size saucepan. So that butter is all melted. I'm gonna add one third of a cup of flour and I'm going to mix that in. Now I have this heat on really low, so mix that in quickly and until it is smooth. Keep mixing and mixing and mixing until that flour is smooth in the butter. And we're gonna keep mixing that until it's a little bubbly. Now that it's bubbly and all of that flour is smooth in there, I'm gonna add four cups of whole milk. This is goat milk, but whole milk all at once. And we're going to stir that in and keep stirring. I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt, along with half of a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm going to turn up the heat, not on high, but maybe on medium high, until this 
mixture comes to a boil and gets thick. I turned down the sauce just for a second so I can put in the pasta because the water is boiling and I want this to be cooking at the same time. So I am using um, an entire pound of organic penne pasta and we're just going to be cooking this at the same time that the sauce is cooking. You can see that this is getting thick now. It's not quite boiling and bubbling, but uh, this is what you want it to be looking like. You need to keep stirring it constantly until it comes to a boil. So the sauce came just to a boil and got really thick, which is exactly what we want. So I turned off the stove and I need to start adding Parmesan cheese. I have one and a half cups of shredded Parmesan cheese. Now the stuff in the shaker bottle from the store isn't going to work very well. So this is the shredded cheese that you get in like the shredded cheese department. I'm going to add half of this at first and we're going to whisk that in and until it's melted in there. And now I'm going to add the rest. Just keep whisking it. It looks all melted to me. As soon as you have the cheese melted into the sauce, go ahead and add in uh, your chicken. I diced that up. It's about two cups of chicken. We're going to add that in there and we're just going to combine it. And the heat of the sauce will just heat up the chicken. So we don't need to turn on the heat at all. You can just let that sit in there. I'm going to cover it with a lid and let it sit there until the noodles are done. Okay, lunch is ready. I'm super excited to uh, plate this so you can see just how beautiful it will be. So we're just gonna start with some of our pasta here. We need to save room on our plate for our gorgeous salad. And our homemade chicken Alfredo sauce. I bet you never knew it could be so easy to make chicken alfredo. We're going to top that off with some parmesan cheese and a nice serving of our homegrown salad. I just made a quick homemade vinaigrette and put some parmesan on there. That is a beautiful lunch. So that was easy enough for the first meal out of three using just one whole chicken. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have enough courage to try homemade Alfredo sauce. It is super easy. It is so yummy. I promise. Don't forget that over the next few days and within this week, I'm going to be putting out two more videos that will finish up this little mini series. Make sure you uh, check it out. If you're enjoying this video and if you're enjoying our channel, please consider subscribing. We would love it. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media, including Instagram. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.